What's up guys, Twice here with another Personal Thoughts video. I got a pretty good response from the last one that I did on becoming an adult and maturity and stuff like that. So this one is going to be a little more narrow in its focus, but I think it applies to a lot of people in our audience, and that is just choosing your college. So of course you're going to hear a thousand different comments and videos and suggestions of, oh you need to take the ACT and the SAT and go to the essay writing stuff and you know, all that is important, whatever, and spending the absurd amount of money on standardized testing and taking essay courses and all this other kinds of stuff. But when it comes to once you've actually gotten into colleges and you have the list in front of you of places that you know that you have gotten into and places where you think you would like to go, that's when it actually matters. I know that around this time, actually, in March of my senior year last year, that was kind of the big thing of, where can I actually go to college? For most kids, cost is probably the number one thing that's going to determine what college they choose to go to. And in the United States, that makes a lot of sense because the cost of college in the United States is kind of, you know, ridiculous. In fact, the cost of college has gone up exponentially in the past 10 years alone. A lot of out-of-state colleges will charge upwards of fifty dollars to $60,000 per year in tuition. And that's not including things like housing, or books, and all other kinds of other expenses that they don't really tell you about. I know that for me, when I chose to go to the University of Central Florida, that was especially because of cost. It cost me about one-tenth of what it would have cost me to go out of state uh, to go to some place like George Washington uh, University or Georgetown or something like that, because it's an in-state school and I got a lot of scholarships. Uh, if you do live in Florida, the Bright Future Scholarship is really helpful. It pays for a lot. Um, I think the only things that I really had to pay for myself were my books, and that was with money that I got from my scholarships after they'd already paid my tuition and my housing. And I actually have a really nice dorm here on campus, one because I'm in the Honors College, and two because I chose to live here. So if I had a lower housing, if I chose to go somewhere else, like another dorm, which that's what I'm doing next year, I'm moving into an apartment where the rent is less, then I'm actually going to get more money back from my financial aid. I cannot tell you guys how amazing it is to make money going to college. It's pretty awesome to think that you're getting paid to go to class. It's totally different than high school. It's really awesome to know that you're also paying one-tenth the cost of someone who goes out of state. If you get into a place like Harvard or Stanford or Yale or you know one of those really prestigious schools, you know, congratulations, that's amazing. I, I am personally very proud of you because that means that you really put your nose to the grindstone and for your high school career, dedicated yourself to excellence, and that shows just how hard you worked. But there's also an element of practicality that needs to be considered. How much money can you really afford to spend on your college? And trust me, you don't want to take out student loan debts. A cousin of mine just got out of medical school, and I mean, he has well over a quarter of a million dollars in student loan debt. And for medical school, that's actually kind of low. You know, and that just goes to show how much money it costs to go to college these days. And that was at the University of Miami, and he even had in-state tuition. So there's a lot of different things that combine to really up the cost of college. And you don't want to take out student loans because that debt doesn't go away even if you declare bankruptcy. It's a huge financial burden to have. I know that my mom... The only reason she was able to pay off her student loans as early as she was was because of the inheritance that she got from my grandfather when he passed a few years ago. So don't do that. Don't put that kind of burden on yourself. And even if you are lucky enough to be able to pay out of pocket, per se, for your college and you know pay $60,000 a year of your you or your parents' own money, it's still not that great of an option. Don't charge yourself more money than what you need to. The other problem here in the United States is that we often think that when it comes to healthcare and education, you get what you pay for. But that's not always true. In fact, you can get a great education from an in-state school and pay one-tenth the cost of something you would get out of state. And plus, in undergraduate, the first two years, you're pretty much going to be taking general requirements, which are just a massive waste of your time and money, but are nonetheless required for you to get your degree anyway, so you might as well pay a low cost to take classes that are, one, not interesting to you, and two, really have no bearing on your future, but are required for your degree anyway. So, you know, take the practical financial step when considering your college, and if you're able to, you know, look at all the scholarships you can possibly get, 
understand that in-state tuition really will save you, and I'm, I'm not kidding you, tens of thousands of dollars over the course of your undergrad career. And also remember, remember this, education is what you make of it. So no matter where you go to college, if you go to Harvard and you're an idiot and you don't do anything, well, then you're not making the most out of all the money that you're spending. But if you go to an in-state school, join all the clubs, do the honors college, and do all kinds of other activities and great things on campus, then you're making absolutely the most for your money. And that's what really counts when it comes to education. So remember all of these things when choosing your college. I know that for some of you that might not be happening for a while, but it's still a very crucial step in choosing not only your career, but also in giving yourself financial stability in your young adulthood. And that's a really nice thing to have when you're in your early 20s, is not having tens of thousands of dollars in student loan debt that is being siphoned, you know, in terms of payments from your paycheck every single week. That that doesn't need to happen. You know, make the smart financial decision. Uh, really choose your college wisely. And remember, not only is education what you make of it, but you want to get the most bang for your buck. So thank you guys for watching. I know this was kind of a, a different video than what we usually do, but I like this segment because it lets me be more personable with our audience. And that makes me feel better as a content creator. So thank you guys, as always, for all the support you've given us. Remember to always have a great day and keep card fighting and choose your college wisely. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.